Uh, title. Any any ideas? Title. 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 What's the significance of the title? I didn't think about that. Ah, really? <laughs> That's where we start. <laughs> significance of the title. Uh, well, I think Sunday is the yes, beginning yes. of the week. Okay. So good, 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 it's good. a good time to have a lesson. It's also that um, comparison to it being Sunday, the day people gather to go to church traditionally. Okay, good. So you would hear a word that is divine on Sunday. So okay. a lesson on Sunday is a lesson for life. <laughs> yeah, it could also be a sermon since yes, it, it, it's, it's sermon. delivered on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, is the speaker teaching us the lesson or is he learning the lesson? I think we are learning with him. Ah, okay. Easy. I like I like yes. that. Yeah. Because we see that the speaker learns as he goes along. He doesn't know the lesson until near the end. So he's learning and we're learning with him. All right, so let's look at stanza one on a whole since we're kind of just uh, glossing over the point. What is the atmosphere painted in stanza one? What are some devices that we can find in stanza one? The speaker seems to be very at, at calm. It's calm, at peace, seren serenity. Yeah, okay. I mm -hmm. All right. Restful. I agree, it's relaxing. Yes, I um, with relaxing. All right, so calm, bliss, relaxed, uh, relaxed. And we have all of these different words that can easily describe the mood, the atmosphere. So what are the devices that are in the line and how do, how do they contribute to the to the mood? The growing idleness of summer grass. This is some easy personification, right? As the grass is, the grass is idle. So we have personification, the grass is idle. With its frail kite of furious butterflies. Metaphor. Uh, metaphor. metaphor. Kites of butterflies. The butterflies are compared to kites. Why are they compared to kites? I wonder. Flying up and down in the air, you know, when the kites are being taken by the wind. I don't know. That's it. Yeah. So Remember, there's imagery. Is, yes, the imagery. I, I thought of grass mm -hmm. and all these bright colors just above the grass. It's very much to the savannah with kites and all these bright colors above mm -hmm. the head. Interesting. Yeah. So it adds to that visual and also the kinesthetic imagery, the movement of the flying, the fluttering, the colorfulness. Yeah, also, definitely. the metaphor here, we're going to be jumping all over the place because we're making quick work of this poem. The metaphor of the kites, mm -hmm. it, it ties to what happens here, where the butterflies are seen as playthings for the children. Oh, okay. yeah. Toys. We know, we know kites are toys. We usually say a flight of butterflies, not, not a kite of butterflies. So there must be some deliberate reasons. We see in, in stanza two that the, the children go on to torture the butterfly, toy with the butterfly, so to speak. So the butterfly may as well be a, a kite uh, to these kids. And in a broader sense, nature might as well be a plaything for, for man. You know, we, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. So we see the, the idleness of summer grass, the idleness, of course, depicting that laziness, relaxedness, uh, and so on. But the idleness isn't describing the speaker, is it? What is idle? What is it that is idle? The summer grass. How, how can the grass be idle? Nobody walking on it, you have nothing in yes, the Yes, that's it. right. Yes, <laughs> it's yeah. just there. Just there, so it, it could also suggest uh, purposelessness, aimlessness. Yeah. Maybe grass that is idle needs to be cut down, and we'll see the mention of a scythe later on, cutting the grass, but we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Uh, see the metaphor, the, the butterflies, as we look at the poem as a whole, I hope we have all read the poem at least, so we, yes, can, jump, we can jump around. The butterflies, do they not act as a, a symbol? So the poem, what do you think? Do you think the butterflies represent something else? And do you think the interactions with the butterflies point to the lesson that the speaker eventually learns? I think the butterflies are central um, in this poem. Mm -hmm. And they, they might, um, in the coming weeks, you will you'll see my full thoughts on the poems because you know I have some lessons coming, but they won't be ready before school, school resumes. That's why I kind of rushed this, this meeting. 
But I think the butterflies represent nature on a whole, as well as the people who are, in a sense, owned. We see that the butterflies are owned by the grass. It's it's frail kites of butterflies. The butterflies are owned. We see that they are toyed with. In stanza two, they are tortured. So maybe whether we're talking about nature or people who are being oppressed in some sense, I think the butterflies kind of give us that, that symbolism throughout the poem. And the, the butterflies occur from the beginning to the end. So they must be very important for some reason. They must be important to the lesson. Do we see any alliteration, consonants? Uh, uh, the frail kites of furious butterflies. Yeah, alliteration, frail. Frail and furious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even wow. well. Butterflies, flies. Mm -hmm. But yeah, butterflies, yeah. So yeah, alliteration. As you look at frail and furious, you can say more general consonants if you include this. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be the effect? We think. Uh, why? What? What will this be doing? This alliteration. Well, appealing to the sound, the sound of the the, the butterflies, the movement. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's my idea. I think it's just mirroring mm -hmm. that, that sound of flight. Mm -hmm. you know, we can imagine the fluttering of the wings making that sound, giving mm -hmm. us that uh, auditory imagery, if you want to put it that way. So, uh, on to line three, requests the simple lemonade of simple praise. Who is requesting this lemonade? I found this simple question difficult to answer. I, this was hard <laughs> for me. Yeah. I, thought, I thought he was saying the, the whole atmosphere Yes, is such that request mm -hmm. a simple yes. lemonade. Yeah, a lem sorry, request a lemonade. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The, the, the subject of the sentence, this is all one long sentence. The subject is the growing idleness of the summer grass. In other words, yes. this atmosphere of calm and bliss. So this, this, this feeling, this, this calmness, this summer, summer energy is deserving of praise according to the speaker. It is requesting the praise, and since it is requesting the praise, you can say it's, it's being personified again. Mm, I would have, mm, 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 mm. request the lemonade of simple praise. Yeah, the growing I would idleness. Have said mm -hmm. the, the um, simple, the lemonade of simple praise. Uh, I, I would have seen a metaphor there. There is a metaphor. Yeah. Okay. This uh, here, uh, the lemonade of simple praise, yeah. because the lemonade is said to uh, the simple praise is said to be a lemonade as refreshing as a lemonade, yes. yeah. So, there we have a, a lot of devices working at once. We have the metaphor as the lemonade is simple praise. So, the idleness is personified in requesting the praise, which is compared through metaphor to lemonade. That's a mouthful. Yeah, and this is all in the speaker's mind. So the speaker is relaxing on his hammock and he's saying, man, this is worthy of praise. We should appreciate this kind of uh, enjoyment that we can have. And uh, in scansion, great, gentler than my hammock swings. Uh, what is scansion, first of all? It's a weird word. Sounds like um, some musical term. Yeah. Yeah, the rhythm. rhythm. Yeah. Yes. yeah the, the, the act of scanning a line of verse to determine the rhythm. Mm, yeah, that, that's a very technical answer. Mm. And scansion is used, <laughs> it's, it's used mainly in poetry, which is very interesting. And yeah. The speaker used this particular term to show us that, by the way, what is happening in scansion gentler than my hammock swings? What is happening in this way? Because this is like an adjectival phrase. What is happening in this way? An adverbial phrase. Something that's how is the happening. praise ought to be delivered. I think that's how the praise is being requested. Requested, yes. Yeah. So nature or this kind of nature is requesting praise, but it's requesting praise in a very gentle, you know, calm, soothing, rhythmic, poetic way, which is even more soothing than the way in which my hammock is swinging at this time. So the speaker is really enjoying the, the, the atmosphere, and the imagery pointing to that, uh, and rituals. So the 
we're seeing that nature has a certain way of requesting our attention. It requests it in certain scansion and in certain rituals. And these rituals, this way in which nature wants to be praised or is requesting praise, is no more upsetting than a black maid shaking linen as she sings the plain, the plain notes of some protestant hosanna. What do we think of this send this phrase? This is talking about how nature is requesting praise. But what might be the significance of introducing this black maid singing a hosanna? While he's absorbing the mm -hmm. while he's absorbing the um the relaxing ambiance that we spoke about mm. is saying that this has to have a gentle balance that must not exceed if something has to disrupt the rhythm mm -hmm. it must not be too upsetting mm -hmm. just like a black maid complimenting the ambiance by shaking linen and singing some protestant hosanna yeah, I'm getting the impression that the, the, that the black, yeah, the, that, that um, action or that um, singing by the black maid mm -hmm. is, um, is welcomed. It's mm. soothing. It's, you know, and that habit of, of her doing that is something that's pleasant to the air. So mm. whatever the praise, however the praise must be um, delivered, it has to be in keeping with his the swing and movement of his hammock and also that pleasant sound coming from the black maid. Um, yeah. Because it certainly doesn't upset him. So it cannot be no more upsetting. Um, I don't know what term to use about mm -hmm. um, for the no more upsetting. It sounds like advice to me. I don't know if it's an understatement mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. some kind of irony in the use of it. Um, but I haven't really said that, really but that's how I see it. That, all of these things complement the scene the scene mm -hmm. yeah and yeah, yeah and emphasize the elements that he is that are around now which includes the black maid shaking the linen and certainly the black maid shaking the linen doesn't really disturb him Unlike the children later on, who he says break, right? Yes, right, right. The thought of um of, sin. Yes. Yeah. Good. So that's a good. Uh, she yes. Is, she is singing a nice hymn on Sunday. Remember that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now I'm gonna upset everyone and tell you that there are some some very dark introductions into the poem here. Uh, we see here the rituals of uh, the rituals no more of sitting than a black maid. Why why is this so? Why is this specifically a black maid shaking linen? And why is she singing Protestant Hosanna? The, the diction here is interesting. A black maid. Mm. Why a black maid? Adam? Why a black maid as opposed to just a non specific maid? I don't know. I just don't picture a white maid. <laughs> a black maid. It's it's it injects together. color, color uh, to that, but, the, into yeah, the whole and act. It's, yeah. I was saying that's a good question because, you know, the fact that the black maid is not upsetting. So there is an acceptance of a black maid doing um, protests and songs. That's what you're going to yeah. say. But let's zoom in even literally on the word protestant right now, right? Protestant, we know that in the, the primary sense here, it, it's talking about those denominations that are cut off from, the, from Catholicism. You know the protestant churches however looking at the word in an even simpler sense we see protest this 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 hosanna is a protestant one so the hosanna she's singing is not just one of praise but it's one of protest remember if something is protestant it is in opposition to something so the protestant churches are protestant because they are in opposition to the papacy they are denying the, the alleged power of, of the Pope of Rome. So they are Protestant churches. So this black maid, specifically black, is singing a specifically Protestant Hosanna. I think mm -hmm. this is this is kind of giving us a parallel to, we see that these butterflies are abused later on and possessed and tortured. This black maid singing a Protestant Hosanna perhaps is bringing my mind to slavery. Um, the, the, the songs that, yes, that the slaves would sing 
the songs that these slaves would sing mm. like Swing Low Seat, Sweet Chariot, Amazing Grace. These are Protestant Hosannas now. These are songs that they would sing in, in a sense, in protest of their current situation and look, looking forward to that distant future where they will not be suffering. I would say that this is a black maid. A maid is, by definition, is somewhat owned by someone else. So I have I, a question. I have a question. Yes, yes. So he, the person, the persona, I get the impression he's enjoying all this, right? Yes. So he is actually relaxing in this ambience and enjoying mm -hmm. the black maid and enjoying mm -hmm. the link or the symbolism of the protesting element mm -hmm. of the black maid's song on this wonderful Sunday morning. Yeah. Okay. What so what does this uh do we see a contrast between the position of the speaker and the position of the butterflies and black maid? The speaker is relaxing, he's in a hammock, seems like a privileged guy. This yes, black, this black maid is working, shaking linens. Yes, being a protestant hosanna. The butterflies are furious. Look at the word furious. We know that it describes their flight, but in a darker sense, it describes their protest. So the speaker has not yet learned his lesson. The speaker is simply observing obliviously, and he is in a state of calm. Later on, when he starts to realize what's really happening, he will start to feel something different. But for now, he's not yet understanding anything. He's seeing what appears to be a calm Sunday, and, and he's, he's thinking about the lemonade and the black maid and the protestant Hosanna and the furious butterflies. He's not seeing what this means. The poem will go on to detail that this all ties into the lesson the speaker learns. But here, the speaker is just enjoying all of this because it appears to be bliss. Are we seeing this kind of deception that's happening? Or this false hmm. perception of bliss? Hmm. Or am I overreading it? Hmm. The butterflies are furious. They're flying, fluttering about. They're moving quickly. That is in contrast to this 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 relaxed, calm idleness. That is true. The I furiousness that, could also but... be an emotional furiousness, anger. Mm -hmm. Why are they furious? We'll see why later on when we see that these children are sticking needles into the eyes of the butterflies and stuff like that. So the butterflies are furious in several senses. This black maid is black and is a maid. That's a, that's a red flag already. She's mm -hmm. seen protest and hosanna that's a red flag also so perhaps the speaker that the lesson will Amidst eventually learn or... is not yet learned amidst that some um, serene serene and um, see you now that you know picturesque environment mm -hmm. there are hints or you know indications of you know something is not quite right yeah and so, uh, maybe a foreshadowing um something mm -hmm. is yeah that's a good one foreshadowing mm -hmm. yeah but uh where am i where am i oh, i've lost it so many so things are not necessarily as they appear to be ah that's mm -hmm. that's kind of the crux of this stanza, mm -hmm. i believe mm -hmm. things appear to be this way but mm -hmm. remember the speaker is yet to learn a lesson so this is before the lesson has been learned the speaker doesn't have any idea what's going on yet but so far it for him it is peace and safety he's in his hammock relaxing but the butterflies don't share his peace and safety. The butterflies are furious. The black maid doesn't share his privilege of being in a hammock. She's working, singing protestant hosannas. So in this stanza, this mood of atmosphere that the speaker is recognizing is a mood for, for him. But this is not the mood that the other characters in the poem can enjoy. And we see uh, the speaker lies idling in this line, idling from the thought in things. So he's not necessarily thinking deeply yet. He's just lying idly, and this imagery, we see so much imagery here, imagery of calm. We see visual imagery with the grass and the butterflies. We, we see uh, kinesthetic imagery with the, the movement of the hammock and the flight of the butterflies. Auditory imagery with the, with the, with the song of the maid. Uh, we see even gustatory imagery with the, the, the um, <laughs> lemonade, if you want to put it that way. So the speaker is enjoying this. However, there is darkness beneath the, the perceived bliss. And the speaker will go on to further understand that this darkness exists. 
that's what I get from Ooh. from the from the stanza here. I have a question. Hmm. Is the speaker, is the speaker also presenting his race? In presenting the contrast with the black maid working and him mm. lying in the hammock, mm. is he presenting his race in at the start? Mm. Perhaps, per, perhaps there's a there's a con well we know that there's a contrast between the speaker and the black maid. Whether the speaker is white or not, the speaker is privileged enough to be in a hammock relaxing while the black maid is working. That much we know. If in this time there is a black maid working and he's in a hammock, most likely he's white because otherwise he would have been working. Or he or, wouldn't need to mention that the maid is black. <laughs> he exactly, he himself. wouldn't need to mention. Yeah. He and perceives this is, mm -hmm. himself as being white in this instance. Or, or even that. He, he could have, he could be who the maid is working for. Why else would he be in a hammock listening to this Hosanna, this maid singing? Or thinking of this maid singing? These could be his children later on. But whatever the case is... Um, or he could be a colored boy relaxing. Hmm. Could be. But ah. we get the sense of obliviousness um, from, from the speaker. And we get the sense that while things appear to be, you know, this perfect scenery, not everyone can really enjoy this blissful ignorance that the speaker is now enjoying. All right, so we see, a, we see a shift here, or so they should. This indicates that something is interrupted or something is not as they should be. What is the they here? What is the they? So what should, so who should? The things, the thoughts in things. His, the, his thoughts? The maid and the butterflies. I think the, the grass, the idleness, the butterflies, the maid, the, the thought. Mm -hmm. They should be enjoying the peace. Yeah. That this is, is enjoying. Yes. So I think the, the speaker is kind of recognizing the, the facade that's happening. It's like he's saying, wait a minute. This is what I thought it was. This is what should be. However, he gets an, he starts to get the epiphany here until so something happens to change this mood. I hear the cries of two small children hunting yellow wings. So we have uh, a start a stark difference happening here. You see hunting. The children are hunting. What are the yellow wings being hunted? The butterflies. The, bu the butterflies. And we. I think we even have a little bit more um, alliteration in the thought in things that might uh, reinforce this this one earlier. So yeah, so the yellow, the yellow wings are really the butterflies, uh, just as in the the previous uh, the previous poem just now, the bones represented the body, as the bones are a part of the body, the wings are a part of the butterflies. So again, we have this synecdoche, which is kind of a type of metaphor. The, the, the children might not be hunting specifically just the wings, but the butterflies are said to be the wings. Or they might just be collecting the wings, which is even a worse thing to think about. They might be ripping off the wings. Uh, whatever the case, the children are hunting. They have power over the butterflies. And the butterflies are like their prey. Yeah, I suppose we, we can see in that way. This breaks the speaker's Sabbath. Does anyone find this line interesting? Who break my Sabbath with the thought of things? Particularly the word Sabbath. Yes, I find it interesting. What, why is it interesting? It almost sounds like it's it suggests how sacrilegious of them mm -hmm. to do this on his day. Yeah. So we, we see that the the hunting of the butterflies, it, it seems innocuous, it seems like child's play, but the speaker is starting to sense some deeper kind of evil to what the children are doing, right? Uh, who break my Sabbath. But look at how pretentious the speaker is. Look at how high and mighty he sounds. <laughs> He's not getting it enough. Who breaks my Sabbath. So. It's the children are doing the sin. They're breaking my Sabbath. It's almost a, a self-righteous tone. Being, but you know, Adam, I see this on two levels. Mm -hmm. This is not only are they breaking his Sabbath 
in the normal sphere, but mm -hmm. he's also breaking the Sabbath is a time of rest. That, oh, yeah. That false sense of rest that he has Ooh. always had about okay. things that are taking place around him. So oh, the breaking of the Sabbath could mean that the illusion is now being shattered. Mm -hmm. Illusion. So let's say disillusionment. The Sabbath is and broken. And then the use of the word break would be significantly significant. Mm -hmm. You know, you break something, it's no longer yes. as it used to be. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. broken now. Yes, yes, yes. That Chapter. makes a lot of sense. And look look at how, uh, with this Sunday here, isn't this a lesson for this Sunday? Sabbath is usually Saturday, isn't it? <laughs> uh, no, but persons call Sunday the Sabbath too. That's true, but I mean, in a in a more traditional sense, if you even look to Judaism, Sabbath is typically yeah. understood to be to be to be uh, Saturday, the seventh day. So I think the speaker is mentioning oh, oh, Sunday. Oh, 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 mm -hmm. oh! If you think it, if you see it like that, maybe we can mm -hmm. look at the title a little different. Okay. A lesson for this Sunday. So it okay. doesn't happen on that Sabbath. It could have happened on the Sabbath. But it's a lesson for him to learn for the Sunday coming. Okay, all right. Okay. We get away. We get okay. Away. No, no, no. That's good. <laughs> that's good because it means the speaker would not have understood immediately why things were happening. But it's something we learn only in retrospect, which, which, is, which is a good idea as well. All right, so that's good. So we we'll break my, my Sabbath with the thought of sin. Also, we have a little bit of irony because uh, so far, there are four people mentioned in the poem. The black maid. What? Yeah, four people. The black maid, the speaker, and okay. the two children. I mean, later on, we see that it, um, it's two children. But of these four people, who are the ones who have sin in their thoughts? Who are the evil ones? The children. How, how strange that the children are the ones who kind of hold this, this, this darkness within them. And later on, we'll see that this feeds into the idea that uh, cruelty is really an innate thing that we develop from childhood. It's not something that we grow, that we grow and learn when we become adults. It's something that is natural to us because it's so ingrained in human nature. I think the poem supports that later on. I want to I want to take this maybe a step too far in thinking that the thoughts are not the children, the sinful thoughts are not the children's, but his. Because once he has their cries, he begins to have some negative thoughts, maybe even probably mm. cutting them out in his head. Mm. That's what I thought. I was not going to say okay. that. I think it's like somebody come and break it to us and say, you see me, I'm going to kill them. You understand? I was having okay. a peaceful day and he's Oh, come to upset my soul here, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way. I, I never looked at it like that. This thought of sin might be his, not theirs. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. All right, let's blitz through. Brother and sister with a common pin, frowning. We have a nice little simile here. Frowning like uh, lepidopterists who, you know, study butterflies uh, professionally. So they're hunting the butterflies and they're taking what they're doing rather seriously. It's not just a kid's game for them. For them, it's, it's, like, it's like an art form, it's like science. And then we have, we have a, a metaphor here, right? Because the little girl is now a surgeon. Yeah. The metaphor, and look at, look at how, I don't know, look, look at how strong the language is. The little surgeon pierces, what a rough word pierces the thin eyes and look at how the girl is depicted crouched on plump haunches almost like a monster just ready to leap mantis. Um, yeah, to as a mantis. Almost, so you, somebody mentioned that the thought is his and here definitely it is his feelings that we're getting that he um he's watching them and he is disturbed by it everything is not quiet and peaceful and relaxing yeah. they are disturbing him with yeah what they're doing and he's disturbed in two senses his his peace is broken but also it's like you know when it, when you you make a disturbing discovery and it's like you have to sit and digest it he's now seeing what the kids are doing as because this is his depiction of the kids 
he sees the little girl as being crouched over like a mantis, ready to prey on the innocent little creature. And look at this. She shrieks. Look at that cry, like, like, like a monstrous scream. And look at this word. My goodness. It, this is this is this feels like I'm I'm reading Dolce the Coromist with this imagery. Eviscerate its abdomen to remove the boils and the organs from the butterfly. That's how it looks to the speaker. So the little girl is there just toying with the butterfly. But what the speaker sees is a, a, a monster torturing a piece of nature. Look at the word eviscerate. Look how cruel that word sounds. That's a very cruel word. Abdomen, we don't usually um, think of butterflies as, you know, creatures with internal organs. We just see them as insects. But the speaker is looking more deeply into what the butterfly might be experiencing. We're down to 12 yeah. of us. We, we, we can't go to the, the next one, poem after this. <laughs> and we, we see here, the lesson is the same. A very important line because the, the title is referenced. He learns a lesson from all of what comes before this. But we still don't know what the lesson is. If we go on, um, we see more depictions of the girl here. The maid removes the prodigies in their interest in science. Prodigies, prodigies interesting word. Uh, you know, we could see this as like child, a child genius. But a prodigy is also like a freak of nature, like an anomaly something that is freakish. So that is how this man sees the, the little children. And the maid kind of rescues the, the butterfly by removing the, the children. And look at who is screaming here. The butterfly is the one being tortured, but who is the one screaming and carrying on with all kind of drama? It's the girl. Yeah, I agree with you, dear, but some I just have a little question. I probably miss mm. it. What mm. is the, the lesson is the same? What lesson is the same? We don't know. We don't know yet. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I think yes. the lesson is not yet uh, explicitly sure. stated, but the speaker is realizing that, oh man, there's a lesson here, but we are yet to see what lesson the speaker learns. Okay. I think later on, in the last stanza, when the mind begins to swing inward, we're going to see what the lesson is. But now we're seeing like a demonstration and then we're going to see like the reflection of that and what the lesson is. I think so. So the, the girl is screaming as if she's the one being tortured. And while the girl is screaming, the maimed teetering thing, which is of course the butterfly, is trying to fly. But of course it cannot fly. The wings are probably torn apart. A pin going through its eye. It's pretty much dead. And look at this description of the girl. She is her thing. She is herself a thing of summer light. What do you think of this description of the girl? I summer think there's light. a connection being made between her and the thing which she, the butterfly. Mm hmm. I think so. So she she is comparable so she, she's a part of nature she's comparable to the butterfly so how is it that she's being so cruel towards it that might be one way to look at it i think, I think there's also irony in the description because she seems to be a thing of darkness based on how she's behaving how, how, how can this person crouching on plump haunches shrieking to eviscerate the abdomen acting like a praying mantis how can she be a thing of summary light how can, and frail as how, a flower. How can she be frail as a flower? What kind, like, could it be a, a, an ironic description in that she appears to be this way? She appears to be just a nice little girl cutely playing with insects. She looks like a thing of summer night. But in reality, what is she? What, what is she representing? Uh, look, look at this next line. Another here. human being who's destroying nature. That's that's what is happening here. Yet we see we tend to see this as a thing of summary light because who cares if a butterfly is tortured and killed? Nobody cares, right? Uh, not marked for some. I I spent about two hours on this line. Not marked for some late grief that cannot speak. What, what's happening here? I think it's a strange line. She is not marked for some late grief. 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, what does it mean? They're referring to her. Mm -hmm. That um, there is not something bigger than her that is marked to poke on, dig into her. That's what I'm yes. saying. Yeah. That yes. she's uh, not like the butterfly. Yeah. So she, he it's makes a reference to really she, that she's like the butterfly in, in sense of being a summer thing. But yet she's not like the butterfly butterfly being marked for some late grief because a butterfly cannot speak but she can i don't that's what i'm getting at oh, so, first reading okay uh so so she she is not marked for some late grief right yeah she, she's not marked for it but, but yeah. let's let's imagine if she were what would it mean to be marked for some late grief in the first place she is so light and she can be easily removed or destroyed or hurt or harmed. So she's not recognizing that she herself is in that position. Ah, so, so she's in the same position as the butterfly? The, that's, an know, just assuming. <laughs> that's an interesting way. What, what I saw here is uh, the, the grief would, would be like, you know your your conscience being activated, feeling sorrowful or remorseful for what you what you have done. So someone who is marked for let's say late grief is someone who would grieve after the fact. So let's say um, think about child murderers. When you're eight years old, you, you kill somebody. You, you have no idea what you've just done. You, you can't grieve. You can't mourn. You're not old enough to understand the implications of your evil. But later in life, when you're 20, you might look back and grieve. In that sense, you would have been marked for some late grief. The grief is late because it comes after the fact. How but do you the, explain it that cannot speak in that all right, all right. The grief cannot speak because the child is not yet able to express grief, just being a child. The child is naive, innocent, innocent, but the not marked. The speaker okay. is saying, even later on, when you have sense, you will not feel sorry for killing the butterfly in this way. So it's not as if at some point you will feel remorseful, you will feel grief, you will have pity, you will change. He's saying you, you will not change. This is a behavior that you will grow into. It's not as if you are evil now, but you will, you know, stop torturing people later on in life. You are not marked for some late grief. So I think it's 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 like a predictor of what the girl will become, which is nothing more than she already is a torturer. Th that that is how I see this line. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, I see it's slightly different mm. in that it's it's really dark in the sense that some similar the girl is in probably awaiting a similar fate to what she mm. has done to the butterfly. So mm. somebody will be grieving for her. But she's not marked for it. Okay. That is what gave me trouble in this line, you know, because saying she's marked for, for grief. I mean, there, there are several ways I could interpret that. But she will not be saying, the one grieving. She will not be the one grieving. She will not experience the grief because it would happen to her. Oh, oh, okay. oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't know. I, mm. don't, I don't know. I'm just thinking. I mean, oh, I none of us know, but that, that's a good way yes. to look at it as well. I like that. Not marked for some later grief that cannot speak. So if she is armed in the time to come, it will be done on such a level that she will not even be able to talk about it. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> we can leave because it at that. Interesting. If yeah. you are not marked for it, it can become it can be something that's unexpected. So it's not ah. you're not you're not being set up for it, but mm -hmm. it's unexpected. It can happen to her unexpectedly. Okay. Well, I yeah. think yeah. that that kind of can work with the the idea of something um reality being different. Sorry, reality being different from her parents. So um, the idea is that, you know, um, it seems that everything is okay, but then, then in the midst of that summary thing, there is the, the, 
the idea that doom is is to come just as with the butterfly it, it it's it's a beautiful thing mm-hmm. but then she takes it apart you wouldn't yes. so there's almost the idea that something beautiful is being destroyed mm. yes right. and finally from me if mm-hmm. you look at if you look at her as that summary thing a beautiful beautiful little girl a flower mm. it is not somebody you would pick out or something you'd pick out for some pain or hurt in the mm. so not marked eh? so it she's not marked because we would not anticipate the late grief that is yes, to come for I'm her right, that's a good way to look at it that's perhaps um more valid than, than than what I thought initially because I I thought this line was was really saying this girl is like no no conscientiousness is assigned to this girl so she will never look back and, and grieve but it, it could be that you know it will happen to her kind of in, in a cyclic way you know she's starting the butterflies no but you know maybe the tables were and turned maybe, later on. And maybe that's why he's afraid because everything seems okay. He's relaxing in this nice scene, scene you know, everything seems, or at least on surface, idyllic. Um, but then he sees this thing that disturbs the norm of things, the kind of summary feeling mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he becomes afraid. He becomes afraid possibly because he realizes that he too um the same thing can happen to him yeah which he might share the same fate all right let, let's quickly look at the last stanza here so now the speaker is basically learning his lesson because his mind is swinging inward which means he's in a state of reflection right uh perhaps I have a metaphor comparing the mind to a door or something that swings i don't know so the mind swings inward on itself in fear what a contrast in mood between stanza one and stanza three it's almost like an imagery so the whole idea of your closing in on yourself you're locked within yourself because when you become fearful there's the idea that you're locked you're locked mm. yourself you become tense so i like it it's a nice mm. imagery there yeah yeah somebody explain the next line please uh, sway toward nausea from each normal sign so uh, the mind is swaying, and it's swaying. It's swaying in fear towards nausea. Uh, of course, that. The nausea, of course, when we, when we are grave, when we are terrified, we, we might say we might have that nauseated feeling. We might we might even be sick to our stomachs. So the fear might not even just be a terror, but it might just be a recognition a recognition of how horrible we are as humans or something like that. But he's he, he's feeling so afraid that he's sick. That's what I'm getting. Uh, swayed toward nausea. It's almost that, that feeling, like the fear is so powerful that it's affecting even how he feels uh, physiologically. Right, so it's a nice, another extension of the imagery of how fearful he is. Yeah. You know? And I like the fact that, um, there's a, it's from normal sign. Okay, yes. explain, explain the normal, normal sign. There are things that happen possibly regularly. It's not yes. anything necessarily unusual. Yes. But so yet, the normal yes. sign would be right. the girl a, playing with the butterfly. Yeah, this is a normal everyday thing. This is something he wouldn't give a second thought on a regular day until this sudden epiphany. So we see here. Uh, I hear the cries of two small children hunting yellow wings. This is this is nothing weird, nothing that looks to be cruel or unusual. But this is what he's seeing in it. All of this cruelty and strange behavior. So the signs of cruelty, the signs... So we see here, this is actually the lesson in a phrase. Heredity of cruelty everywhere. Even this little girl has inherited the truth of cruelty, which she exacts upon the butterfly and these signs that he sees he sees a girl playing with butterflies that's a normal thing but he's not recognizing that within these normalities are like hidden cruelties 
So we see something that we see every day, we, we think not, nothing of it, we take it for granted. But maybe if we stop and really internalize the lesson, then we'll, you know, have a different idea as to what's going on. And we see that. So the you know, yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, okay, carry on. I was just saying, I the suede is just so beautiful because, I mean, because the idea, you know, you're moving from side to side. So it, it just intensifies the idea of I am so overwhelmed by yeah. um by this. It is it's so intense the feeling that I can't stand straight. Yeah. And we've seen diction that relates to that kind of movement with scansion, with, with swings from earlier on, but at this point, they had positive connotations, but now the swing, it's, yeah, it's, it's like he's nauseated, he's sick, he's, his, his mind is wobbling. In, in Another sense. interesting thing is that when it begins, okay, at the forefront is the beauty, the, the beautiful atmosphere, but there is the underlining, as you pointed out, um, so before that um, of the darkness, and then no, the darkness comes forefront, and um, the beauty is just the underlining. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, so things appear to be beautiful and, and perfect, but the speaker is seeing something beyond that, that apparent beauty. And the beauty has taken like a backstage. Uh, so, the, so the frogs of summer tone is symbolic of that? Yeah, I, I would say there's a heavy personification here. We see summer wearing frocks um and it's torn frocks which would suggest that i mean i guess we're the ones who tearing up the frocks the same summer here is described to be beautiful here yeah. it's wearing torn clothes it's not that things changed it's that his perception has been deepened so he's now seeing that it's not really this it's not really this that's real but this is actually the reality in that we are you know we see some we, we see a little girl playing with butterflies as something fun and cute but he's seeing it as like someone wearing torn clothes someone being you know marginalized or, or abused or whatever the case is he's now seeing so the, the ugliness beyond right. what first but appeared the frocks, to be beauty the frocks of summer is also somewhat symbolic of everything um beautiful um everything good it's now torn yeah. the, the ideal the idealistic view then is um is torn so Shattered, it, doesn't yeah. see, it doesn't see things the same way and it links with the fact that his thoughts have been um changed yeah so he has been enlightened by by this little anecdote with the with the child and the butterfly it's like he's now recognizing but this looks normal, it looks cute and fun, but whoa, I can actually see some dark tendencies in us. If, if a little girl can have fun eviscerating the abdomen of a tortured, fleeting butterfly, what does this say about us as, as, as humans? What does this mean? You know, how do we really treat nature? What, what am I? Who are we? I think he's really recognizing that things aren't as beautiful as they seem. And we're the ones, of course, responsible for the, 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 the torn frocks that Sama is forced to wear. What about the literal meaning where she's, he tells us she's wearing a lemon frock. Yeah. And we look at her frock being torn, her, the frocks being torn, her not being marked for anything, but later the frocks are torn. But whose so, frocks? Yes. So I am just thinking here that hmm. probably... Um, Oh, I'm getting lost in my thoughts, sorry. Mm. Probably we, we are looking at the lesson, not just for the persona, but for ourselves as well, that the things we do to others can come back to haunt us. Mm. Yeah, that, 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 that comes into the, like, the cyclical nature of cruelty. Yeah. You know, cru cruelty is, in, is inherited. It, it runs, it just runs through history. And as, as the speaker reflects on how cruel we are and how this cruelty, it has a reverse effect. It has a continual effect. Cruelty begets cruelty. And we see he's looking 
he's looking back. He's can, trying. Can, before, before you go to that line, yes. Um, I just want to because it says, and everywhere the frocks of summer, and the whole idea from the beginning is that there is a summer. So there is a summer atmosphere where he's sitting. I. Um, relaxing, mm -hmm. and then there's a summary thing in relation to the butterfly being yellow and everything, and also the summer in relation to the girl. And so, everywhere, um, the frocks of summer, summer towards towards. all these idealistic, oh. um, this picture That's of beauty, yeah. all of those are torn now. So he is disturbed from his um his summer um by the children, and then he's disturbed by the what she does to the butterfly, and he's also disturbed by her with her attitude. Mm -hmm. So the whole picture now is torn. So and and it is interesting that from the beginning he's building up that imagery of that kind of summer and now he's saying that is torn almost like you have a page you describe this and then you just tear it or mm -hmm. yes sort of like that so you're building up something and then you you're saying it is torn that's interesting that. so the frocks are like a metaphor mm -hmm. yeah yes or yes they're metaphoric and also yes. symbolic of, of things that are beautiful are things that appear or are things that were beautiful or appear to be right, beautiful right yeah yeah so th that's that's interesting the speaker is this is all the lesson now that that the speaker has learned and as we jump to the last two lines see, we're, we're finally coming to an end the long look back to see where choice is born what choice what choice well, all the choices the choices of the children the choices mm. of him to be ignorant to what was happening all around him all those choices he's mm -hmm. looking back and he's looking at life from a new perspective now mm -hmm. and look at that you can see that even with the last line the mm -hmm. sea is realizing mm -hmm. that the grass that he found so beautiful was actually beautiful but 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 it was following a design of the site. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. The site, mm -hmm. right? Which is like to me when I read it, it's a symbol of death. You know, like mm -hmm. the reaper's um, symbol that come to harvest and take away. So it's not a positive thing. But he's recognizing that the summer grass that he appreciated, he yeah. appreciated yeah. something that was designed from a dark place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a good um, that's a good point to take choice, from the side. The choice also be um, between good and evil. Mm. The where choice was born, our choice um, in innate cruelty. We're born, you know, the whole idea about being born with sin, and where do we get that choice between good and evil? I I don't know. I just see a biblical. Mm. You know, are we born to be to? Is that something we we choose to be cruel, or are we innately cruel? Uh, uh, yeah, I think the the speaker is concerned about that because if you look here, we see the heredity of cruelty. So we see that mm -hmm. uh, this little girl is cruel not because she's weird, but because her parents were cruel and cruelty runs in the family of of, of humans, and this cruelty is shown in the torturing of the butterfly. But I guess he's wondering, at what point do we choose to be cruel? Maybe as a person, maybe as a human race, where did we go wrong? He's just trying to, you know, uh, backpedal. And perhaps, perhaps he's wondering if there's a way in which we can, you know, go back to I escape, it. escape this cruelty, go back to not being cruel. Or, or, or were we always this way? You know, I think he's thinking of all of these things, uh, looking at the, I think the long look back is not just a personal level, like, you know, a person looking back into childhood, but he might be looking back through the annals of time, wondering at when did humanity reach this state? He's trying to figure it out. Like, were we always having fun torturing butterflies? Was this always us? What was this, um, the whole and thing? Then, uh 
also the long the long look back yes to that to the whole beauty of things because in a sense it ends where it began in a sense with the summer grass um and here it says sways to the I won't even try to pronounce this right now. <laughs> <laughs> the size um, mm -hmm. design. And so the whole idea is that even the grass, even the grass is at the mercy of um, destruction. It is going to be torn, so to speak. So um, even though he's looking back, there's almost this sense that um, you can't escape it. Yeah. And who, who is it that wields the scythe? Uh, you see, it could be an allusion to, to, to the reaper, death. But I mean, farmers, just in a regular human sense, farmers use scythes to, to cut grass. So the scythe is, is kind of being wielded by us, by humans. So it's, it's as if we have created a downward destiny for everything, almost. Because the, the summer grass, is swaying to the scythe's design. Just as we saw that the little girl carving out a destiny for the butterfly in, in, in torturing it. it. Similarly, our in our cruelty has created like a destiny, whether for nature for us, whoever want to see it. And a design can also mean an evil scheme, an evil plan. So it, it suggests that this is kind of a planned or a kind of fated kind of thing where it doesn't happen randomly. It, does, it, it doesn't just happen, but it is by a design. Whose design is it? Who is the one torturing the butterfly? Who is the one, you, you, know, you know, tearing up the frogs of someone? I think the, the lesson might be that, you know, we, we seem to be inheriting this cruelty and we need to recognize what we are, what we're doing. And perhaps if the poem had continued, the speaker would try to figure out a way to to reform reform us. I don't know. But yeah. Any final thoughts? We need we need to end. <laughs> one one quick thing that's one thing that stood out for me is where she begins to scream. Why does she begin to scream? Mm. She was pulled away mm. from doing her deed. <laughs> yeah, she's a child. But is she that the beginning to... of a scream for the ages, for for times, times to come, for things that are to come? I'm just, it's just a question. Based on, <laughs> based on what some of us said about the late grief, it could be. Okay. But for uh, in terms of what I believe, the, the, the simple meaning is, you know, she wants to continue torturing the butterfly, so she doesn't want to leave. <laughs> Okay. So just, you know, throwing a tantrum kind of thing, I believe. Screaming. Okay. Yeah. And Thank you see that the, the black maid is really like the the hero of the poem, isn't she? Because she's the one who rescues the butterfly. She pulls this evil child away. And it, that might yeah, suggest ironic, that... Eh? Ironic in a sense, yeah. Yes. And it, it could also <laughs> suggest that on, only people who are in this position only people who are themselves oppressed can really empathize with the oppressed. You know, it's the black maid, not the speaker, who saves the butterfly. Empath who empathizes with, with, uh, with nature. The speaker, he, he doesn't empathize. He's relaxed in his hammock. It's the black maid who intervenes and removes the girl. All right, we'll have to stop, I suppose. So we we'll stay tuned for your lesson on Ooh. landscape painter. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to yes to that one. That's I think that's gonna be an interesting one. Okay, themes I have here religion, nature, suffering and sadness, power and powerlessness. That, that, that's what I have for themes for this one. I finally found what, what I was looking for. That is okay, it, guys. Thank you, thank thank you, you for much, spending everyone. your nights here. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. Wow. Let me crawl, crawl into my bed. Yeah. Yeah, so, thank you, Adam. Thank you guys for coming out.